Hi, this is Pastor Ray, pastor of the Impact Center. And I just want to invite you to come and get a revelation from the throne room of God. It's such a blessing to see you walk in our doors. And I just encourage you to pray, hear God. And if God tells you to come to the Impact Center where Jesus reigns and the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached, I encourage you to come. Be obedient to God because your breakthrough could very well be out of your obedience to God. So I hope and pray that I see you here at the Impact Center where Jesus reigns. God bless. That was contemplating suicide is what I heard the Lord say. That you were at a place that you were like, you know what? I can't do this anymore. And there's no embarrassment. The problem is we're not talking about it and that's why people do it. So if that's you, I want you to come to the front right now. I know that I heard the Lord say that. There was somebody here that was thinking about killing themselves. Come up to the front. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody should rejoice in See, what you don't understand is you don't know what people struggle with. You see them in church every time the doors are open, but you don't know what the enemy's doing through their mind. So you just have a perception they're okay. But you know, when God begins to move, when the presence of God shows up, this is what happens. We've taught about this for months. This is called the word of knowledge. It's not like she came and she texted me, she called me or anything. I know what I heard the Lord say. And the problem is that we don't move according to what God says. We wait on the program that's happening. There's a young lady here that at any point in time in her life, we could have been doing a funeral. Instead, we're doing a celebration. Yeah. because what we don't understand is this is a spirit and it's a sickness she wasn't created to have this sickness and this spirit in her life she was created in the image of the most high God the one that spoke everything into existence the one that set things in place so today and I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that the blood saturates her mind right now. And I cancel this from the very roots from wherever it came from. These thoughts of suicide will never come back again. That she will have life and life more abundantly according to the purpose and plan of God. Jesus. 
because of the anointing that's come upon your life now that you have been set free. You'll be able to speak to many young people that will come to you. And you will wonder, why are they coming to me? It is because the anointing that has been placed in your life to speak to those who are captive to the spirit of suicide. Yes. And you will speak freedom. And you will speak life. And you will declare that they will live and not die. I thank you for the testimonies that will come forth because of the willingness of this vessel to step forward and say, here I am, Lord. I surrender all. In Jesus' name. say that I bless that you guys are here this morning. Amen. Amen. Well, I have a couple of announcements that I need to get out of the way. Um, Patty Graham and Brandy Monday, in which Brandy Monday is one of the intercessors that will travel with uh, 
Dr. Jay Swallow all over the, the world. She's also going to be with Patty Graham. So please um, set everything aside this coming Friday the 23rd at 7 and Sunday evening the 25th at 6 p.m. and come and be blessed. And if you want some things, some old baggage, some, some things, and you really truly want to get rid of them, I encourage you to come. Amen? Amen. Amen. We also have a fundraiser, and uh, this is going to be with our sister, Rack Allen, which keep her in prayer, guys. Um, I got a call this morning from her, and she went to see her father in Houston, and she wasn't able to see him because they have the quarantine because of the flu. So, um, so I began to pray with her and encourage her. So you guys pray. And, and just ask God to be with her and give her peace this morning. Amen. And any other uh, take family members that we have out because of illness. So we need to come against that ugly disease in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But anyway, she's going to have an end of taco fundraiser Monday, February 26. And we are 50 chairs away from our goal. Amen. So I want to thank you for your faithful tithing, your faithful giving. And I'm going to give this over to Apostle Ray as the children make a make their way i know but i still want them to make their way up here and he's going to tell you what god has been doing amen amen come on y'all keep putting your hands together for the lord and what he's doing i want to tell you as a matter of fact why don't we get all the adults to stand also because that way is is we pray over the adults i mean over the children we're going to go ahead and also pray over our tithes and offering. I want to tell you that God is really, really opening doors. And we got a check in the mail. <laughs> Hallelujah. And here's the thing. It's from somebody from out of state that sent us so that we can purchase some chairs. That's how God works. That's how God does things. So I, I'll be the first to go ahead and put that in here. Remember, the one in the middle is for the the chairs. If you if you got cash, I encourage you to put it in an envelope. Um, however, you're giving, and always mark it. Uh, remember that we have the kiosk in the back. There's texting and giving as well. And I want to I want to tell you and reiterate that I appreciate so much all those that are continuously helping in building this ministry as you can see we're in construction that comes out of your faithfulness to give so that we can develop so that we can knock out walls and do things so i want you to know that pastor rochelle and i really appreciate all of your hearts to give and let me tell you it's recorded in heaven amen it is recorded in heaven so don't count it lightly and i encourage you to call in the harvest on what you sow amen because there is a harvest i i said earlier where's he at brian he it was his birthday and he sowed he gave his tithes from the money he had gotten that's faithfulness that's being taught amen he could have used that for another computer game but he said no I got to be faithful with what has been given to me. Amen. We can learn. A lot of us adults can learn from that. So, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for each and every young person here. I thank you for their life, Lord. I thank you for who they are in the kingdom. God, and we just thank you for Jasmine, Lord. And, and we know that, Lord, this is a hard time for her, Lord. But we declare, God, that you'll give her the peace that surpasses all understanding. That her baby lord is now in the presence of the lord that it is running around the throne room of god so we thank you god for the strength that you're giving her lord and i thank you for every young person i thank you god that you're encouraging them and you're uplifting them and you're giving them strength when they seem to be weak god that you would open up and just pour the strength that they need for that time and that season god lord teach them your ways Lord, so that they would never depart from them, Lord. So we thank you for their lives. Lord, and we pray now over our tithes and our offering. We declare, God, that it will continue to be used for the things of the kingdom. 
that it will continue to expand what you have called us to do in this city, God. Not just within these four walls, but in this city, God. That transformation, your presence, your glory will fall in this city, Lord. I thank you for everyone, Lord, who has sown a seed and continues to sow, God. Lord, let their harvest begin to rain down upon them starting today. In Jesus' name we pray. We all said amen, amen and amen. Cross the aisle, shake somebody's hand, give them a big hug. Let them know, hey, I'm blessed because you are here. It's going out. I'll we'll kill it. I told you guys, I, I like. I want to take you somewhere. Can we go somewhere? Anybody excited in this place today? Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm I'm really excited. I'm I'm pumped up to see what God will continue to do today. I mean, I don't know if you're just satisfied with what you got, but I know that there's more. Can anybody say more? More. How much more do you want? How much more do you want? Okay. Well, let's get all of it. Let's get us some. Can we get us some? You want some, you got to come get some. Amen? Amen? So I'm really excited. I know that you guys are like, man, he's got a mess up here. But guess what? This mess is a message. Amen? Amen. This mess is a message, and it's for somebody. And before we start, I want to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you, exalt you, and magnify you. Lord, and I just declare that today, it will be none of me and all of you. Lord, that they would not see me as, as, as God, as they would lift me up, that they would want what I have. God, they need to want you. You got something specific for them. God, what you've given me, I'm grateful for and I'm thankful. Lord, and I, I'm just a, a massive weapon of destruction in your hands, God. And I just am willing to do the most craziest things to see your glory manifest. So today, God... I declare that there's a hunger in these people to see the glory of God. That they would desire you above everything else, God. Lord, above everything else. Lord, that they would just focus on you. That right now, every form of scale and distraction is rooted up right now and cast out out of this place. And that every life here will hear with clarity what God has to say today, God. Lord, I thank you that you have a desire to take us higher. That you don't want us to stay in the same place that we're in. You are pushing and you're pressing us, God, so that we can see your manifested presence, Lord. So I thank you, God, that they will only focus on you today. In Jesus' name we pray. And those that are in agreement would say... Amen. amen and amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you I'm really excited because God is wanting us to go higher. That God is not a God that just plans to give you something and not give you the next dimension that He desires. Amen? amen. You know, we I've said this before that we have gotten accustomed to just going from level to level to level to level. And I've heard in the Pentecostal realm that they say, hey, new levels means new. See, but let me tell you something. I want to change that mindset. Because in new levels, there's bigger angels too. We can't give those devils any glory. I believe that we're not only going from level to level, but that God started to transition us from dimension to dimension. And I know that's hard for you guys to fathom and put in that little mind of yours. But I'm not talking to your mind. I'm talking to your spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
I'm talking to the spirit man that resides on the inside of you. If you know God, here's what I'm going to tell you. That now we're moving from one era to the next era. And God is wanting to use the impact center in a supernatural way. And I know that some of you might be thinking, so you mean he don't want to use other churches? I don't know about other churches. I'm not a church hopper. I know what happens here at the impact center. And I know what God wants to do here. And that's my focus. I will help any church that's out there. However we can serve them, we'll serve them. But I've got to do what God has called me to do. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Well, the title of today's message is, go, is called Going Higher. God is asking each of you and the Impact Center these questions this morning. Are you willing to go higher in 2018 to see my glory? Are you willing to pay the price to see miracle signs and wonders? What are you willing to lose or give up to experience a lifestyle of revival and not another event? See, when we hear, hey, there's a revival down the street, everybody's like doing the Heisman, ready to go. Ready to go to hear the next prophetic word, to be in the next revival. Let me tell you something. What God has shown me is that I am revival. <laughs> Some of you got that. You have the fullness of God living on the inside of you. You have His very deity. You can revive those dead bones again. Hallelujah. You can revive them. But you just got to be willing to pay a price. I don't know what your price is. You know what your price is. You got to be willing to pay it. You got to be willing to go and say, God, whatever it takes, here am I. Use me. It's going to cost you. I'm going to tell you, this ain't going to be pretty. Glory to God. Number one, I believe that these questions pertain to you. Willing to see where things go without you. Ah, uh, listen. Controlling the Holy Spirit. See, today, some of you, wait, wait, wait a minute. That's, that's not time for you to do that. See, you're operating out of a clock. You're operating out of the natural time. God don't operate out of this. Be grateful that these aren't mine because they probably would have got Hulk smashed just then. We don't operate. We should not operate when it comes to the things of God out of a clock. We should not operate in the natural time. We should not limit and say, wait a minute, that's not the time for that. That's not the time to do this. It is not, wait, that's not on my schedule. I'm telling you, you got to pay a price. When it comes to God, it doesn't matter what your schedule is. It's God's schedule. It's God's timing. It's when He wants to do it and how He wants to do it. See, we have this predetermined idea that we can put God in a box, that we can control God. Let me tell you something. Nobody can control God. He's God and He's God alone. And we have to stop trying to put His revival, His outpouring, the great awakening in a time slot. Well, we got to sing this many songs. We got to stop to take this much offering. We got to stop to do this. We got to stop to do that. You know, here at the Impact Center, we do plan things because the Bible, it is done in decency and in order. God does have order in heaven. He said it, not me. He has set things into order. But you know what? God can do whatever He wants to do and when He wants to do it. Who are we as children? Now I'm talking to your parents. I don't know about y'all, but my kids can't tell me what to do. So what gives us the right as sons and daughters of God to try to tell God what to do? But yet we do it. Well, God, I don't feel like getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning to pray. Who do you think you are waking me up? 
Come on. Maybe none of y'all have done that, but I talk to God like way. You don't understand, God? You created me ugly. And as much sleep as I get, I get prettier. I mean, I've done that. I've asked God, why do you have to wake me up? Because I want to talk to you, son. You've cried out for this. i got to wake you up in the still of the night. Because during the day, you're running, accomplishing what I've given you to do. So at night is when I can wake you up and talk to you because you're so sleepy, you won't talk back. <laughs> See, because you're constantly going, guys. We're constantly on the move. We're a moving generation. They, fed, they created fast food, McDonald's, and then they made it even faster. You can get it through a drive through My goodness, that's how we want church. We want to be able to go to a drive through and give them what we want. Give an order and leave. Let me tell you, this is a season God doesn't want to do that. God wants intimacy. God wants to control you instead of you controlling Him. When God controls you, let me tell you, there's a peace that passes all understanding. You can't even begin to fathom what daddy is downloading and you're like, oh, and I'm not talking about the lights. His presence is so good. See, but we have to be willing to make ourselves available to God. It's going to cost you something, guys. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 says this. Do not quench, subdue, or be unresponsive to the working and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love the Amplified Version. Amen. Because it tells you, do not be unresponsive. When He wakes you up, don't just roll over. You know when it's God waking you up and not the pizza you had. Get up. Get, have a notebook by your bedside. Have a pen. Have your phone. My goodness, technology. I showed my brother Sam. Dude, you can just speak what God says and it puts it down. I would encourage you to go back and check the spellings. Because <laughs> you took, most of y'all talk hood and God don't, he don't know how to write that out. Or I mean, uh, what's her name? Siri. Siri. Siri doesn't know how to talk hood. That's why I have to go back and even Pastor Rochelle sometimes, did you read what you sent out? Nope. <laughs> they need to invent a hood Siri so she can write it how I say it. But you can write things out. And you, if your husband and wife say, what are you, who are you talking to? Go back to sleep. It's just me and Jesus. <laughs> That's it. But we got to be responsive to when he's moving, to when he's talking. And we got to follow His guidance. Glory to God, not your own. Number two. I believe that these questions pertain to you being settled and secure in what God has told and trained you to do in the following of the Holy Spirit without fear, but in power, love, and of a sound mind. You know, not too long ago, I got a picture of uh, Eli. He was riding his bike. And he was like, take those wheels off. See, most of you are saying that. Apostle G, take the wheels off. I can do this on my own. But you don't understand if you take the wheels off too soon, then I'll be taking you to the hospital. Amen? Amen. So he just... He said, has he learned to drive it without it now? Not yet, see? So there's a time. There's a process. I can go because Eli wants it off. I'm going to take him off and do all that. But God knows your process that you're in. Don't jump out too soon. Because when you do, then all of a sudden, bless you. You fret. You've fallen. You've got a boo-boo. 
And now you're calling me up at 2 o'clock in the morning, Pastor Ray. This happened to me. And I'm like, did you take the training wheels off? Well, um, um, all of a sudden, now we got to heal you from stuttering. Because you don't want to admit that you jumped out too soon. And you're hurting now. So guess what Pastor Ray does? He calls Pastor Jim. And tell Pastor Jim, Pastor Jim, go minister to them, help them out. And they'll, he'll do it. We've been called out two, three in the morning while you sleeping, snoring. Everybody thinks there's hogs running outside, but it's you snoring up a storm. We get out and we come and we put your training wheels on and we hook you back up and bandage you up and then come on, let's go. Stop jumping out of the process before it's time. Stop having the preconceived idea that you can do this on your own. We need each other. I need you as much as you need me. I'm trying to tell you. You don't understand. I need you. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, says this, For God will never give you the spirit of fear. That means fearing man. The fear of God prevents us from fearing others. I just kind of added that in there. But the Holy Spirit, who gives you mighty power, love, and self-control, which is revelation and instruction, you can trust God to help you through the process. You don't have to fear man. I, I could never fathom why we have the audacity when we serve such a mighty and powerful God that we fear what people say about us. That we still fear our past. We have no right to do that. Because you're either going to trust God or you're not. At the end of the day, are you going to trust God in the process? There was three children that got thrown in a fiery furnace. You don't think that they for one minute said, I don't want to be barbecued. I don't want to die in a fire. But you know what? They knew that it was a process to see the presence of God. Sometimes we got to go through the fire, guys. That's how we get purified. That's how we get back into the image of God. The purest form of goat is when you can see your image, your reflection coming out of that goat. And let me tell you, that's what when God looks down, He wants to see His image being reflected back from your life. And it's not going to happen on what you got on the outside, like Pastor Karina said. God is looking on the inside. Does your inside compare to His? It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you guys. It's costing me. But I'm willing to pay the price. I'm willing to pay the price. I'm willing to die preaching the truth of God. I'm willing to die loving the unlovable, embracing those that have been rejected and refused. I'm willing to die doing what God has called me to do. See, Pastor Rochelle said, and I totally understand in the context that she said it, that we're not a gift to the world. Well, I'm here to tell you that according to the book of Ephesians, I am a gift to the church. You can read it. I am a gift to you. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can't take it to Ross. You can't take it to Walmart and get a refund. It is what it is. The five-fold ministry is a gift to the church. Read it. It's in the Bible. 
So, honey, you got a good gift. <laughs> Chat number three says this. I believe that these questions pertain to you applying what God has said to you. Listen, without the ways of the world. See, we try to wrap up culture into what God wants to do. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. You can't put the world inside of the gospel. See, we are in this world, but we're not a part of the world. You've got to separate yourself from the world. But we try to hold on. Well, this is my culture. You should have a kingdom culture. See, praise the Lord. I'm Puerto Rican by race. But I'm saved by grace. Puerto Rico did not lead me to the Lord. It was the grace and the call of God that led me to a place to fall on my knees and repent for my wicked ways. And accept Him. Not just as a Savior that took me out of hell, but a Lord that leads my life and tells me what to do. See, there's a big difference, guys. And I know that we Latinos are hardcore about la raza, man. I know that, and I understand that. I was there with you. I've knocked out a lot of people who came against Puerto Ricans. I promise you. But it didn't get me any closer to God. Right. Now, can I minister to the Latino community? Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. I think I can minister to any race. And that's my passion. To minister to all that come. I don't care what language they're in. Because guess what? When it's a divine appointment from God, if that person comes in here talking Chinese, God will give me the ability to talk Chinese. To lead that person to Christ. Amen. So we can't get locked into that mindset. No, you know, I love Chinese. I eat Chinese. <laughs> get out of your mindset, guys. It's going to cost you. That's why Pastor Jesus and Pastor Karina, they don't have gimmicks for you teenagers. You want pizza? Tell mama to buy you pizza. We're going to give you the gospel. The gospel sets you free. Little Caesars gives you heartburn and big belly. See, we don't believe in gimmicks here. I'm not going to tell you Hey, if you bring somebody, I'm going to give you an El Chico's gift card. No, I'm not going to do that. You bring them because God says that you're supposed to do the work of the ministry. That's why you bring them. Not because I'm giving you something nice. Glory to God. Oh, Lord. I don't know if it's me, but it's getting hot up here. Romans chapter two, 12, verse 2, says this. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. Preach it, brother. Preach it. I like it a lot. See, we have to understand. We abuse, and I've said this, and I'm going to continue to say it until God tells me, shut up about it. We abuse grace to do our sinful lifestyle. But right here, it clearly tells you that there's an empowerment to discern the will of God. That's grace. It is an empowerment to say no to sin. It's not 
a justification or a little card like in Monopoly that tells you, go ahead and sin, and you can use this to get out of jail free. No, that's not grace. If you were taught that in church, that's a no-no. Grace is the empowerment to discern the heart of God so that you don't do it. So then all of a sudden, God doesn't have to show you mercy. Because the mercy is what you really deserve when you disobey His will not to sin. See, that's the mercy. Hallelujah. Y'all better tattoo this scripture or something on your forehead so you remember. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do something to remember that the grace of God is an empowerment for you not to sin. Glory to God. Number four. I believe that these questions pertaining to you wanting to hold on to and carry the past into the promised land. Let me show you. Glory to God. That's why I had to wear sweats today. I knew I was going to be in a workout. Hallelujah. Are you watching this? Y'all watching this or we need to pray for eyesight? Praise the Lord. I have one little one over here say yes. 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 You look like Pastor Rochelle up here. Glory to God. I'm going to show you how some of you are operating. And God's not well pleased. Lord. Where's security at? Oh, my boys at when I need them. Glory to God. I'm going on this trip. It's difficult, ain't it? Some of y'all just want to go this high. But see, God wants you to go higher. Get out of the way. Scoot that one out of my way. Praise the Lord before I knock it over. But see, it's still kind of hard. Because most of y'all got to grab onto a ladder because you're scared. Come on, you're scared. You're scared. But see, here's the deal. Here's, here's how easy it is, guys. Let go of the past and go up higher. Be willing to go up higher. Are you comfortable trying to carry all that into the promised land? You're trying to carry what God has already rid you from. He says, I don't remember this past. He said, I forget as far as the east is from the west. Who can figure out those measurements? None of y'all can. Because God has them. He says he puts your sin, your sin in the sea of forgetfulness. But you got to stop fishing. you got to stop fishing in the past. God doesn't want you to carry this junk into your promised land. Some of y'all, last Sunday, went through the door. You about to knock that door jam out of place. Because you were trying to carry your luggage. And you were trying to make things fit. Let me tell you something. When a fire breaks out, I don't care about anything except grabbing that woman and throwing her out the window and me jumping out after her. <laughs> but some of you, wait a minute. You better get the dog. You better get my, my cell phone. You better get my iPad. Baby, you better get baby, you better do this, baby. No, it's fire. You can die. Get out and get out as quick as you can. That's why they say, what is it what they say? Uh, stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> Not this cat. I'm rolling. Straight on out. I'm serious. But yet, we try to do that with God. Wait, God, this is a real nice suitcase, God. Can I take it with me, Lord? Why are we going higher? Can, can I take this one? God says, no. Because on the other side, there's somebody willing to carry your suitcase. You're busy trying to carry yours, and you don't even have to. God has assigned angels 
to encamp around you to help you on the other side. But they don't want to carry your baggage. It's like taking your dirty clothes. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You want to carry all your stuff. And God say, mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't handle all that stuff. And like Pastor Rochelle said, not that I say. I'm not taking my dirty laundry over there. I'm not taking my old baggage. God has set me free from it. Because let me tell you, on the other side, there's going to be trials and tribulations. And if you're too busy carrying what you had on this side, you ain't never going to make it to the other side. I promise you that. You ain't never going to go higher carrying your stuff. Isaiah chapter 43 verses 18 and 19 says this. Do not remember the former things or ponder on the things of the past. That means, you know what? Let me tell you all something. Okay, you did drugs. Okay, you did cheated on your wife. Okay, you cheated on your husband. Have they forgiven you? Has Jesus forgiven you? Then let's move on. You don't have to live there. But if you haven't asked for forgiveness, you better get it right. God is going to expose it. So I'm just trying to tell you. He's telling you privately. I've been telling y'all. If you're doing what you know you're not supposed to be doing, because the grace of God keeps telling you, hey, knucklehead, stop. I'm going to tell everybody, stop. Oh, God, you're not that type of God. I'm here to tell you, yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. So he's trying to tell you, if you've asked for forgiveness, and you know that God has forgiven you because you've repented from the heart, not lip service like we do. It's like we do God, like we tell some people sometimes. Well, yo, I'm sorry. And God's like, I don't think so. Because remember, you might say it from the mouth, but he knows what's in your heart. That's the fear of God. Understanding he knows what's coming out of your mouth doesn't line up with what's in your heart. Let's repent. Let's turn and walk away from those sins. And God will remove them. Amen? Amen? You won't have to carry that to the other side. Listen carefully. I'm about to do a new thing. This is the Lord. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it would spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even put a road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. Let me tell you, God, this is a promise from God. As long as you start walking, God's going to make the crooked path straight. He's going to guide you. He says your steps are ordered by me. Who else has a better GPS than God? Why would we not follow God? Don't follow man. Follow God. Here's what I'm going to tell you guys. If you see me get out of alignment... If you see my character get jacked up, you know what? Take it to God in prayer. Because I'm not beyond correction. I submit to God. Matter of fact, I put this on blast. I said something and Jacob brought it to my attention. And I had to explain why I said what I said. Did it clarify it? But he told me. He said, man, this has been bothering me. See, we got to understand we got to be willing to say, okay, man, I, I said something. I didn't say it right. Or even if you said it and you were saying it wrong. Yeah, I did say it wrong. Forgive me. Did I not ask you to forgive me? That's how we roll as sons and daughters of God. Don't let pride be the cause of your fall. So, understand when you start this process with God. Today, when you're ready to say, okay, God, I want to go to the other side. I want to go higher. I want to go to where no man has gone before. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. And some of you may say, well, you're on your own, Pastor Ray. I ain't going to run this race with you. That's you. But then when you stand before God, don't blame me. Don't blame us. 
Don't blame the pastors. Don't don't blame the impact center. Well, you didn't do it. God's going to say, I know. Yeah, they did because they fulfilled their race. They answered their call. You got to answer yours. Amen? Number five, my last reason. I believe that these questions pertain to you. Say, me. me. Yeah, you. I, I notice only five of y'all said that. Why? Don't be scared. Say, you. You. No, see, you're good to say me. <laughs> I heard all of y'all say that. Say me. me. Yeah, only some of y'all, half maybe. Those are like, start speaking in tongues all of a sudden. I believe these questions pertain to you running the race God has called you and chosen you to run without hesitation. Here's the thing. I love, you know, I brought some, some of the equipment from the house. You know, I was, I was, I love baseball. This was my thing. Even when I wore my hat in today, Pastor Karina said, you do look like a baseball player. Well, this is the way I used to dress. I had my glove. Not this. We call these pork chops. It looks like a pork chop all smashed up. But I had a really good glove. I mean, I, I, I had everything. Everything to play, to play ball. But we're in a race, guys. And this race is not a, uh, what do you call it? The fast one? A sprint. Yeah, you can tell. I don't know that one. <laughs> yeah, right. That's why I got a Suburban. I just drive. But, not that one. This one. Yeah. But, we have. Uh, we're in a marathon. Y'all ready? Don't duck. Psych. We're in a race, and it's a marathon. And the Bible tells us that it's a marathon. So it's going to take endurance. It's going to take a process. Okay? And, you know, you can see that there's stuff here to work out. There's Pastora's little jelly roll thing. A mat. You know, I got my bag. Herbalife, real good stuff. You know, uh, I even got, look. Let me show y'all something. I got Pastor Rochelle's beats. Glory to God. I can't hear a word y'all say. Glory to God. <laughs> Yay. See? I mean, we got we have sports in our in our family. You know, we, we understand the race. We understand this. Boy, I just keep hearing myself in that thing. But guys, it's going to be a process to get where God wants us to get. And it's going to cost. But you have to ask yourself, are you willing to go higher or are you just comfortable where you at? Are you comfortable with just, and I know you guys are going to like this. Are you guys comfortable with just doing five pounds? I had a sister Connie, she picked up the whole thing. I said, hello, brother Steve. <laughs> but guess what? After five pounds, it just so happens on here, there's ten pounds. See? So guess what, guys? That represents a process. And you can go up to, I think it's 57, 57 something, 57, 78. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> you can go up to 52.5 pounds with whatever exercise you want to do with that. Okay? So there's a process for you to get to that max weight on there. It's going to take time. It's not like I promise you that you're going to wake up and you're going to come and you're going to grab 52.5 pounds and just start curling it like you've been doing it all your life. It's going to take time. But guess what? We're here to help you get to that place. We're here to spot you when you start to get weak. But here's what I'm going to tell you. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, we read this verse in the leaders' meeting. I'm not going to fall because you have fallen. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'll help you as long as you're willing to be helped. I'll help you as much as you're willing to make the changes that God has given you to do it. 
But if you just want to sit there like a stump on a log, that's you. I can't force you. Let me tell you, I've tried to change my wife for 30 years. Now you know why I'm bald. I acted up and she scalped me. There's no change. I can't change her. I can't control her. But I have a God that can't. And as long as I'm going through my process and trusting God with my life, he'll change her. Because he knows the desires of my heart. And we have to understand, my desire, what's in my heart for each and every one of you, and the rest that are to come, is that lives will be changed. That we would impact their life with the glory of God. With the love of God. To realize that we're not based on color, creed, culture, race. None of that. You're a child of God. Saved or unsaved. Amen. There's hope for the unsaved. There's some of you that are saved that still don't act like children of God. But God is saying, are you willing to pay the price to go higher? Are you willing to let go of those things that cause you to stumble? Are you willing? In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It's so cool because this was part of our study. Our devotional. I, I don't understand. We invite people to devotionals, Brother Sam, and it's like they don't want to do it. I don't know. We're trying to help you guys. We're trying to help you. And listen, if you miss a day, do two days the next day. Get caught up. It's not like we're going to come in here and we're going to whip you. Just get caught up. You know, it's like when we do a fast. If you accidentally eat a Big Mac. I don't know how that's accidental. I'm just saying. It happens. Pastor Rochelle's done it. You know? Then guess what? Okay, Lord, I messed up. I had me a good Big Mac, happy meal, and... I'm starting back tomorrow. Then just start back up. Amen? Amen? Here's what it says. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. As for us, we have all of these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds. So we must let go of every wound, listen, that has pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into. Then we will be able to run life's marathon race. Y'all see that? That is called the Bible. And the Bible says life's marathon race. Quit trying to do it in a sprint. Let the process. Go through the process, guys. Go through the process. With passion and determination. For the path has been already marked out for us. Man, I'm trying to tell you, when I read that, I about fell out, Pastor Jim. Because I was like, I've been trying to put lights on the path. And God already marked it out. And I'm like, okay, God, I'll change the battery so that everybody else can see the path. See, that's all you have to do, guys. You don't have to try to create a new path. Just follow the path that God has given. And then help somebody else get through that path. Amen? Let me tell you, let me break this, this, this verse down to you. Where it says, every wound that has pierced us. The implication is carrying a wound that weighs us down and keeps us from running our race with freedom. Let me tell you, the past is a wound. You might not want to admit it, but the past is a wound. It's pierced you. It's, some of it is so deep-rooted, it's hard for you to forgive the person who did something to you. Because you're like, well, God, I want to see it happen. But remember, if God is forgiving you, you have to forgive others. So this is a piercing that has happened in your life. It may have been drugs. It have, may have been an abortion. It has been uh, cheating on your wife or your husband. It, it had, all these are past things 
that have pierced your life. Maybe you were raped. Maybe you were molested. I understand that hurt. And I understand you ask God, where were you? Let me tell you where God was at. He was right there because it could have been a whole lot worse. Don't blame God. The person who did it was influenced by a spirit to hurt you. So don't blame God. They're wounded just like you are. So you know what? Say, Lord, okay. I'm not going to carry the past. Those wounds that hurt me and knocked me down, okay, God, I'm going to let it go. And I'm going to go higher in what you've called me to do. Can somebody say amen? amen? Let me give you the next part. And the sin we so easily fall into. The sin that so cleverly, listen, sin is clever. It entangles us. Let me break it like this. Let me translate that sin like this. The sin that is ready and waiting for us. It's like, it's, okay, they're going to come out. He's going to let them out pretty soon. I'm outside. I'm waiting on them. They're going to come out. Oh, God, I'm going to get them. I'm trying to tell you, as soon as you start to drive out the parking lot and somebody pulls out in front of you, there's sin right there. It's ready and waiting on you. This is speaking of one sin. The context would point to the sin of unbelief and doubting God's promise. See, we try to make all these sins. The reality is just one sin. is not believing God. Not trusting that God can remove those sins. Not trusting that God can erase your past. Not trusting that God can do things in time that would fit our schedule. Not trusting God that He's going to give you the endurance to run the race. Not trusting God that He has trained you enough to be able to speak about the goodness of God. That's the sin that we need to understand. The next part that I want to break down to you, that we are, that then we will be able to run life's marathon. I want to break that down. This race will not be easy. This race is not going to be easy. Some pastors may have told you that it's going to be easy. That's a lie straight from the pits of hell. Because there's still a devil in activation. There's still a devil. Listen. There's still a devil. And the devil is bad. He wants to destroy the purposes of God in you. So let me tell you. It's not going to be easy. But the proper path to run has been set before you. The problem is you keep deviating from the path. Stay focused on the path. God, I'm focused on you. Matthew 6, 33. Man, everybody that has been in this church at least a month should be able to quote that scripture. To seek God first. To do things His way. And he says everything will be added. He'll make the path out for you. Hello? You don't have to go and make a path. He's got it set for you. Amen? Amen. Then the last part I want to talk about is with passion and determination. For the path has already been marked out before us. The race personally appointed to us. God has a destiny for each of us that we're to give ourselves fully to reach. God doesn't want half of you. God didn't give you half of Jesus. He gave you His whole son. His whole son that He beloved. He just enjoyed His son. And He gave him completely over for you. Because He wants a relationship with you. He doesn't want half of you. Just imagine you guys. Come on, bro, let's be serious. What if your wife just gave you half of herself? How would you feel? I ain't got time for that. That's a whole woman. I want it all. We have to understand, we got to give ourselves over to God. He's given us everything. We have access to everything in heaven. To an inheritance. And you want half? 
You want half of God's promises? Because, check this out. If you give them half of yourself, you're only going to get half. Because the measure you give God is the measure you're going to give back. But yet you, you're trying to tell God, no, I want more. I want, you need to give me more. God's like, I ain't giving you no more. This is going to cost you. You want to go higher? It's got to cost you. You got to let things go. You got to let that past go. You got to stop thinking about what man thinks about you. Don't worry about man. He can't save you from my judgment. But yet we let man control us. When at the end of the day, they're not going to help you get into heaven. I promise you that. That's you and God. That's your relationship. So I ask you again. Let me ask you the questions again. As you stand to your feet. Can we get some of the guys to move some of this stuff? Please. God is asking each of you in the whole entire impact center. Are you willing to go higher in 2018 to see my glory? I want y'all to process that question. Are you willing to go higher to see the glory of God? Are you willing to pay the price to see miracles, signs, and wonders? You know, the Bible says that the New Testament church should be operating in miracles, signs, and wonders. Let me tell you, God's already started to do it here at the Impact Center. I'm here to tell you, i got a couple of amens. Praise the Lord, I'm glad you're happy about it because I'm ecstatic. That I told my wife yesterday, baby, my neck is hurting. Can you please massage my neck? I didn't ask her to pray. I didn't ask her to. But she got some anointing oil, started rubbing my neck, and it's gone. Yes. It's gone. It don't hurt. I'm going to tell you, I couldn't even move my neck. That's a miracle, guys. That's a miracle. You see Jacob? Jacob should have been dead. Jacob should have been dead. He had so much drugs in his body, a pharmacy was chasing him. But look. A living miracle. Pastor Jim, look at that beautiful hair he's got. He was dying of cancer. Literally dying of cancer. But look what he's at. should have been dead. I don't know how many times I got shot at. Yeah. I don't know how many times I got hit by a bat or by a golf club. And I'm still here today. There's miracles right here in this house. And it's just the beginning. God wants to do such supernatural things. But it's going to cost us, guys. It's going to cost you maybe staying till 1230, 1 o'clock. 2 o'clock, until the Spirit says, okay, time to go. But we just get so locked on time. But let me tell you, when you're in the Spirit and the glory of God, 15 minutes, of, to you be 15 minutes, and 4 hours just went by. Because you're in the glory cloud. You're in the presence of God. God is doing something. God is shifting the atmosphere. God is manifesting His presence. But is there a people today that would say, I'm hungry for that? Are you willing to pay the price? It's going to cost you. I'm trying to tell you guys, if you don't get nothing else, you want to go higher in God, it's going to cost you. If you're comfortable where you're at, I feel for you, man. I'm, I'm just going to be straight up 100. I feel for you. But I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable where I'm at. I want what God wants. I want to see what God sees. I want to experience the move of God everywhere that I go. Not just here. But this is a great place to start. That we allow the gifts of the Spirit to operate in this place. There's churches today that are just, and I just be honest, 
You can call me up if you want to because you're watching me. That are dead. Amen. The Spirit of God is on the outside trying to get in. That's right. That's right. That's right. But there's so much program that he's like, I, they didn't include me in that regiment. See, not here. Not here. We pray for God to completely take over this place. And let me tell you, if I don't preach and say one word, the Holy Ghost will preach a whole lot better than me. I'm, I'm straight. I'm grouped with that. If he wants to do it, do it. But I just thank God that he will use a foolish thing like me to impact lives. And guess what? He wants to use you. He wants to use you today. As you walk out of this place, remember that there's a, a, a enemies that are going to attack you as you walk out, even within the building. The devil is trying to attack you and stop you from your purpose. But you got to rise above that. you got to go higher. You have all power and authority. The devil doesn't have any authority until you give it to him. You give him the authority to do things. You empower him. Let's take away the, the authority for him to do anything. And let's begin to declare the word of God. As you walk out of this place today, find somebody to tell them about what God has done in your life. You might not know the Bible. I understand that. But testify about the goodness of God. Talk to people and tell them, hey man, we got people that are getting healed at the Impact Center. We got people that are getting delivered from demons. Man, there's miracle signs and wonders happening. It's not dead. It's happening. God wants to do it. But he wants a people. Listen to me. He wants a people that are hungry enough to pay the price. If I'm going to call you out. If you're hungry enough to pay the price, you need to come to the front. Count the cost. While you walk it, man, it's going to cost you. I'm trying to tell y'all. It's going to cost you getting awakened in the wee hours of the night. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you guys. You're going to get a phone call and you're going to say, hey, we need you to come over here. Well, I don't have the money. That's all right. God will provide. If it's God, he'll provide. I'm telling you, God will provide. That's his name. He'll provide. You're going to have, God's going to put you in a place that you have to pray for somebody who's sick. And you're sick yourself. And you're trying to figure out, man, how, how can I pray for this person if I'm sick? Pray for them. Because in that, you're going to get healed. Obedience. Let me tell you, today would have been my dad's, Rochelle's dad's 75th birthday. And I seen that man, he had no legs, had no kidneys. He was on dialysis. He had missing fingers. He'd lost his eyesight. But guess what? He never stopped laying hands on people to his dying day. I'm telling you because I would carry him into services. And he would preach like he had all the energy in the world. And then I'd roll up his wheelchair and people would come through the line. And I see people get slain in the spirit, left and right, because of the anointing that was on his life. And people would ask him, hey, Jerry, why hasn't God healed you? He said, I don't know. It's not my problem. That's between God. Whenever he wants to do it, he'll do it. But I'm doing what he's called me to do. See, don't let your current situation stop you from doing what God is doing in heaven. Because let me tell you, if it was up to me, I'd continue to hate all of y'all. But God's put a love and a compassion for His people. I don't know why I love you other than God. And I'm telling you, I love you to life. I don't love you to death. Because I want you to live. I want you to run your race. I want you to run the course. I want you to run this marathon that God has set for us to run. And I want us to do it together. 
I don't want to run by myself, but I will. I, I, I will run by myself, Pastor Jim, if I have to. But I know I won't because you're here. I know I won't because Jacob's here. Because Leslie and Phil are here. Because you guys are here, I don't have to run by myself. This is Steve Wolverton, media minister of the Impact Center, and I would like to thank you for listening and sharing this time of worship with us today. Senior Pastor Ray Garcia and the leadership and family of the Impact Center would like to invite you to continue visiting us here on YouTube, and we invite you to join us for live services at 2810 Northwest Sheridan Road, Lawton, Oklahoma. If you can't make it in person, we also live stream our services on Facebook. Follow us at the Impact Center of Lawton, Central Day Impact on Sundays at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We would like to keep you and yours in our prayers, so please like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or stop in during service and share a cup of coffee with us.